All right, guys, uh, thank you so much for being here and, and uh, participating in our Media Day interviews. Uh, we're excited about this upcoming season. We've had a great preseason so far and, uh, you know, really just anxious to, you know, kind of chomping at the bit to get to get this team, uh, you know, competing and, and uh, you know, kind of see where we're at. You know, I've watched our guys practice and train against each other for months now. Um, ever since the U23 uh, Nationals uh, back in June. And so I'm, I'm anxious to see us wrestle someone else. I believe we have uh, a good group. I think it's a great blend of youth and experienced guys. And, uh, you know, I'm just kind of excited to see who those young guys are that step up and fill some of the, the holes left uh, in last year's team by, you know, a few key losses that we did have from last year's squad. Coach, when it comes to developing a schedule, you've got Cliff Keen back on the schedule this year, whereas uh, you've also had the Keystone pretty much consistently in the past. But uh, an event like Las Vegas is big for getting guys matches against those nationally ranked competitors. Sometimes a win there uh, really does help buoy a kid into the rankings throughout the course of the season. That can kind of carry him when it comes to coaches ranking and stuff like that. Uh, when it comes to preparing a team to make the decision, okay, we're going to go to Vegas this year. What's the mindset and uh, how does the team makeup really depend on uh, the decision to go to Vegas? Well, here at Appalachian State, obviously our goal is to have all Americans every year. And uh, to do that, you've got to test your guys against the best uh, wrestlers in the country. I do believe that the Las Vegas tournament is probably the toughest um, tournament, uh, especially uh, the toughest two day tournament, um, you know, throughout the course of the season, it's, it's, there's just tons of, of opportunities out there. And, and for a program like Appalachian state, that's, that's looking to always have our guys in the uh, getting national exposure and in the, in the spotlight, we want to give our guys as many opportunities as we can to see those best uh, uh, wrestlers in their weight class. And I do think Vegas gives us that opportunity. It is a very costly trip, but it's very important for us and for our program uh, in helping our wrestlers get, uh, you know, the exposure that they need. And and piggybacking off Vegas, you look at the schedule, of course, you've also got the scuffle in there, which is right down the road uh, in Chattanooga, kind of a staple for for the Southern teams. Uh, when you see these type of meat grinder tournaments, do you worry about how deep your team is going to be or what are you doing to kind of combat? It's like, okay, you know, a couple of these meat grinders can chew your guys up, your good guys up, and, and they may be on the shelf when you need them down the line for the Southern Conference dual meets. So uh, where's the balance with who's going, you know, to the opportunity to get those those big matches against those good guys, but also to make sure guys are rested at the right time or, or you know, hitting the right number of matches for qualification procedures. I mean, uh, hitting Vegas and the scuffle the same year, that's that's pretty ambitious. Well, uh, just to to be uh, forthright, uh, Jason, we probably will not wrestle all of our starters in both of those events. Uh, the the thought behind it is obviously if we've got all of our starters healthy, Vegas is the, is the tournament that we want to get all of those guys to. But it always seems to happen that maybe you've got a couple of starters that are banged up in December, or maybe they're not fully healed from a from a previous injury. Um, or, or maybe you just have some young guys in your lineup that are maybe not ready for Vegas. And so maybe we don't wrestle them in Vegas. And uh, if we do have any of those uh, misfortunes to have a guy injured early in the season and he misses out on Vegas, then we still have the scuffle on our schedule that hopefully we can get those guys an opportunity to see some nationally ranked guys at the scuffle. So, uh, yeah, the, the scuffle is just too close to us for us not to have it on our schedule. But but the idea would not be to typically have both uh, our starters wrestle in both. Now we might have one starter or two that wrestle in both, but it'll kind of be a case by case basis. They're both on our schedule because at the time of year, I'll make that decision who we're taking to Vegas. And then after Vegas, we'll look down the road and, and see who needs to go to the scuffle uh, because if they do miss out on Vegas. It's their last opportunity to see some nationally ranked guys uh, probably before we get into our conference schedule. And and again, keeping with the, uh, with the schedule theme, uh, you've got NC State on the schedule, which has been actually from a wrestling fan's perspective, it's been a great dual meet to kick off the year because, uh, you know, they you can you give them fits every year. They're close dual meets and whether sometimes they may take seven or eight, but those matches may be one, two point matches where one goes the other way. And all of a sudden it's five, five. Um, that's a great way to kick off the season from, again, from my perspective as a wrestling fan, but uh, Virginia Tech right up the road to in Blacksburg, that's something that's uh, they're, they're a national power now and getting those teams on the schedule for dual meets, those non-conference single duels. How important is that for, for your program and for your program as a whole from uh, the fans perspective? 
It's extremely important, Jason. Uh, you know, wrestling here at Appalachian State is a, a very big deal in this community and on this campus. And our fans want to see us wrestle uh, top ranked schools in, in varsity gym. And so we have tried to create a schedule that gives our fans and our alumni the opportunity to come to Boone and watch uh, their Mountaineers wrestle some of the best competition in the country. And so the dual meets are really important for us. We have a great fan base. Typically when we wrestle in varsity gym, it's most often a, a packed house where it's standing room only and we're continually growing and improving our environment in varsity gym. Uh, but I think that's the one thing our fans like is that we wrestle quality opponents and we put it on the line in, in a dual meet setting. And, and that's something that all of your fan base can rally behind one team versus one team. I think it's much easier to build a fan base through dual meets than it is the tournaments. Let's, let's keep on that note because I'm, I'm an attendance guy. I'm a guy that's pestering, uh, Brett every week now to the point where he's, he's put the attendance in, in the releases each time. So I don't have to, he's one less SID. I have to pester about that. So, uh, you know, seeing the posted attendance and, and making sure, you know, getting app state in that list of schools that we release each year to say, Hey, here's what we're drawing down, down to, down to our home arena. And we're seeing those teams come in. How important is it to see actual, some, some real tangible numbers be like, yeah, we're going to draw this much. We're, we're selling season tickets. We've got a demand for our product. Absolutely. It's it's extremely important, uh, not just to our fan base and our wrestlers, but also to the to the university and administration. I mean, I think it's important to showcase our sport. Like you mentioned, I think we put a great product on the mat and it's a, an entertaining sport for our fans to watch and for our community and the students here at Appalachian State. And every time that that you know, someone from the board of trustees or uh, the board of governors or our chancellor, if they step foot in varsity gym and, and see what a crowd we draw for our home dual meets, it, it kind of showcases what a big deal is here at Appalachian State and just what a special sport uh, that we have here. And so I, I'm always proud of that. I mean, we want to continue growing it. We're, we're trying to uh, expand our facility a little bit, add some seating. Uh, so over the next course of the next couple of years, you're probably going to see varsity gym transform a little bit, maybe some added bleacher space, a video board and some things that are also going to can continue to uh, engage fans and, and create an even more electric uh, dual meet atmosphere. A couple more things I want to, want to get to before uh, I can, I can yield the floor to Trey a little bit is one uh, the Southern conference championships on the schedule. Again, uh, what makes you guys the, the, the right host for this thing year in and year out? Well, I think the Holmes Convocation Center is a beautiful arena. We have a ton of of uh, space, so it's it's really a great venue for a championship. But I also think it's just the the crew there at the Holmes Center and, and the the production that they're able to put together seems like it's just more than than any of the other uh, you know venues that we've been to. I mean, we have a a light and a and a video show and and smoke coming out of the tunnels and stuff for the final it feels like a championship and i think that all the coaches like that leading into the ncaa tournament that our conference championship feels like a championship and kind of get your team ready for that kind of atmosphere that they're going to that they're going to feel at the ncaa championships in march and to follow up on that ncaa championships question now uh, we, we lost the opportunity for history last year with with john john milner being uh you know shelf for lack of a better term um an opportunity not able to compete for that last run to make uh make the podium for a third time uh just what's his status how's he doing uh what what, what was what was his presence like for the program well i mean i can't say enough great things about john john i mean i've obviously got a great relationship with him and and he's always going to be near and dear to my heart uh, i was it was devastating, you know, kind of what happened to him. And, and ultimately, I mean, our program last year having a potential for our first three-time All-American, I think he was in a great spot to do it, uh, just to have the misfortune of, of him missing for illness um, and that being his last year. But John John's doing well. Him and his family live in Charlotte now. He's got a great job with Fifth Third Bank. And uh, he's actually giving back to wrestling as well. He's working with a, a wrestling club there in Charlotte called Dark Horse. I just saw him this past weekend, at Super 32. I think he's coming up this weekend. We have homecoming here at Appalachian State. He texted me last night, wanted to know what time practice was. He's planning on being here Saturday. So, uh, just excited to uh, you know continue to see him grow as as a as a man. And and uh, you know he's he meant a tremendous amount to this program. And still to this day, you know I see him at the Super 32, and he's you know really proud of of his time here at Appalachian State. And uh, you know 
just really it's it's special when someone comes in your program and, and makes a mark like he did uh, and and you always continue to to see their impact that they left long after uh they've left your program got a couple more later but i'll wait for uh wait for uh for trey to jump in here hey coach how you doing good how are you i'm great i'm great glad to be here first first ever media day so i'm glad it's i'm glad it's with i'm glad it's with wrestling all right so you had three we spoke about john john you had three guys leave the program and john john caleb smith and will fermato you spoke about the youth you have coming in um what can you say about them uh replacing those three guys well i don't like to say a whole lot till we get through the first semester <laughs> but but uh i think we've got a good group you know it's just so hard to know i mean uh I've been doing this for a long time and and I really hesitate when anyone asks me like, Oh, how do your freshmen look? I'm like, I, I always tell them like, I'll tell you in six months because you know, right now we're zero and zero. We haven't made weight. We haven't had any struggles. And a lot of times you really just don't know what you have until you face some adversity and see how those, those young men handle that adversity. I do believe that we've got some young men that are very capable. I think they're talented, uh, but we're going to have some youth in some spots. We're going to make some mistakes early on. I'm, I'm sure of it. Uh, but I do like the lineup that that we're uh, that looks like it's coming together for our team. I think that you know, hopefully we're going to be uh, competitive and and we'll keep you know the the mark set high for Appalachian State wrestling and being competitive. And we're going to find out in a hurry because next Friday night we've got NC State coming to Boone and. Uh, I mean, they are a really, really solid team. And so we're going to be tested at every single weight next Friday night. And and we'll find out really fast where we're where we're at and, and where our weaknesses are. So uh, you know, we're just we're just thankful and looking forward to that opportunity to compete. Um you got two upperclassmen that missed um a lot of time last year and Cody Bond and Sean Carter. Um, what is it like for them to be active and back in the locker room making an impact? It's great. You know, I mean, you can just see the, the difference that those guys make when they're in the locker room after practice and their shirt's wet and they're sweaty and, and they've just went through a hard workout just like the other guys. It's just not the same when they're coming in the locker room on crutches or in a cast and, um, you know, maybe not participating in the workouts. I think that that our guys feed off the energy from uh, some of those veterans that have been to the national tournament and have wrestled in some of these battles that we've had over the last, you know, uh five to 10 years. And uh, so I think that they do, uh, they bring a different energy and a different dynamic when they're in the wrestling room and they're training. So we're excited to have both of them back. Uh, obviously Cody Bond feels like he's been here forever. This is year number seven. And then, uh, you know, Sean Carter in his fifth year. So thankful to have those guys back. Uh, their, their rehab and stuff looks good. And, and I feel like uh, they're healthy and uh, we're excited to have them back in our lineup. We spoke about, um, Virginia Tech and NC State coming, but you also bring in two other ACC opponents in North Carolina and Duke. North Carolina, another ranked opponent. What can you say about those two programs, bringing them in, facing them year in, year out? Yeah, I think it's it's important for us to wrestle our uh, in-state rivals, you know, that being NC State, North Carolina, and Duke every single year. It brings a lot of notoriety as far as name recognition and I think our fans really enjoy seeing us wrestle and compete against those programs. And, and we've, you know, we've had, you know, a fair amount of success um, and we're always competitive. And, and uh, I think that's what our, what our fan base, they want to see us wrestle dual meets that matter. And then, you know, one that, that you haven't mentioned, but honestly, maybe the toughest one of all of them is going to be the Cornell match. We've got Cornell coming here in February. And so having the big red here in Boone and varsity gym is also going to be another highlight on that schedule. Our guys are going to be tested this year. There's absolutely no doubt about it. If they, if they get to the national tournament, they're going to have been battle tested. That is 100% for sure. If there's one guy that um, I know we're talking to five, the five returning, or in a couple guys, but if there's one guy that is kind of under the radar, who who would you say it is is going to surprise surprise some people this year? Oh goodness, um, I think we got a lot of guys under the radar. I mean, we we really didn't <laughs> we didn't have a great national tournament last year. Obviously, losing John John did not help, but um, you know, I, I don't know. I think that I hesitate to say. I really do not like saying because I don't want to give it away, the guys that I think are you know, could potentially be. But I think our heavyweight, Jacob Sartorio, might be one of the guys that I think has made the most gains in this offseason. He is uh, – you know, he's he looks good. He's physically – he's in great shape. His, his skill level has improved drastically. 
his hand fighting skills are some of the best of, of any heavyweight we've ever had. And uh, so I think he might surprise some people um, the the jump that he's made since last March. Um, so I think he, he might be one that I would, that I'd be feel confident in saying that he's made some tremendous gains and excited to see where he's at uh, starting next week. Great. That's, that's all I have. I want to circle back on a couple topics that um, don't pertain directly to this season, but uh, first off is uh, any thoughts on the potential for, for division one wrestling to realign? Uh, we've, we've got massive conferences. The IWA is, is, is big. The Mac is big. Uh, you've seen growth with, with Bellerman now transitioning uh, into the, into the Southern conference and such, but uh, you know, maybe, you know, we, we basically are reactive to what football does and to a lesser extent men's basketball with our sport. We have to wait to see where the pieces lie to see where our, our sport's going to adjust. Where do you think wrestling should go with the potential for, for realignment? I'm a fan of smaller conferences, uh, better access for, for like funded programs, but um, you know, where, where does, where does uh, you as a mid-major coach sit? I agree. I think that the current model is, it makes the most sense. Now I know the big 12 and, the SEC movement, it affects football and basketball and a lot of other sports. But really, in this in the sport of wrestling, uh, you know, the Big Ten obviously stays intact. I mean, I think hopefully there's an opportunity to add some programs from those schools that, that join the Big Ten. The ACC is a really strong wrestling conference right now. I do not see uh, those schools uh, going anywhere. And then the one thing I like about the Southern Conference is, is I think that we are uh, a lot better maybe than, than what we showed last year. I, I think, you know, just from misfortunes of, of the schedule and just not having some guys ready at the right time. Maybe we didn't, you know, earn the respect that I felt like we were, were warranted. Uh, but I, the thing, the one thing I like about it from a mid major, when obviously we're competing on a, uh, a limited budget and things like that, like here at Appalachian state, we can get in a van and drive to, you know, pretty much every school in our conference outside of maybe two or three programs for a day, for a, for a day trip. You know, we can travel to Campbell, wrestle them same day, come back. Uh, we can do the same thing for VMI, Davidson, um, Gardner Webb, Presbyterian, all those schools. We travel the same day, wrestle, come back. So our guys don't really miss a lot of class. They're not on the road a ton. Saves our budget for not having to get hotels and flights and all that kind of stuff. I know out on the West Coast, it's a little bit more of a of a challenge for those programs, but I kind of like the Southern Conference and the MAC and and just some of those like the EIWA. I, I kind of think they're unique to our sport, and and I really would prefer that than to go to some kind of a regional format. As you mentioned, Jason, I think that having access to limited funded programs is going to really be important for wrestling to continue to grow. And secondly, maybe this uh, this could bite. Um, <laughs> the wrestling program a little bit, but the mid majors really have been feeling the sting of of NIL, or at least that's been the perception. How does this impact wrestling and programs like you? I mean, granted, the added year with uh, some of these athletes that are getting at fifth and sixth and sometimes seventh year, say, well, you can't always go to graduate school where you went, where you got your undergrad. So the opportunity to go new places is there. But uh, NIL seems to be a bad word for mid majors. What's what's your take? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I. I think it's it's gotten away from what it was originally intended. Uh, I don't think that people are, you know, I, I have no problem with a student athlete if they have created a name for themselves, people paying for their name. Uh, what I don't like is the combination of that and the open transfer portal that now uh, big programs can just recruit off of not just the high school rosters, but they recruit off the mid-major rosters as well. So you do all this work, you recruit a kid, maybe he was uh, under the radar in high school, you develop him, make him really good, and then all of a sudden – he sees this opportunity for greener pastures as far as, uh, you know, getting an NIL deal or maybe more money and things like that. And so I think it really, uh, it hurts in the sense that we kind of encourage, uh, you know, maybe that long-term commitment or loyalty or whatever you want to call it or pride in a program that, you know, you, you spend a lot of blood, sweat and tears and a lot of people help you reach your goals. And then all of a sudden it's just like, well, thanks, but I'm, I'm going to go on and try to make more money. And, uh, you know, like I said, I don't have any problem with with kids earning money if their name's that big, but I don't think that's what it is in wrestling. I think there's very few kids that are getting sponsorships. I think it's more or less you're just getting an alumni through a round back door way to, to give the kid more money. So you basically have scholarship plus whatever they can get off of an alum. And it's it's really just kind of making it more lopsided. And, you know, some of the big programs now, they don't even have to recruit the high school rosters. They'll just recruit all the other college rosters, you know, and I think that's 
I don't know. I don't know if I like the direction that's going. I, I'm not sure that, you know, that's, I don't, I'm not sure that's great for the, for the lessons and the values that I think the sport of wrestling has taught me and, and that I hope it teaches everyone else uh, throughout their life. All right. A lot more words there for, uh, for probably another conversation, but uh, this is about your program, your, your, year coming up. Lastly, uh, who are you going to have to contend with? Everybody kind of knows that those, uh, those guys in Bowie's Creek are doing a good job in, in, in promoting their program and stuff. But, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's real rivalries brewing within the Southern conference. And, uh, there's, it's not just, uh, the, the, the worlds of Twitter. It's, you know, I, I love what some of these schools are jawing with each other with their actual accounts, not just the fans doing. So, uh, definitely a buzz around uh, Southern conference wrestling, but, uh, you know, who do you got to knock off to, to return to the top? I mean, there's several good teams. I mean, honestly, I mean, obviously Campbell, I think was the preseason favorite to win the Southern conference this year. They returned pretty much their entire lineup. Um, you know, but I mean, I'm sure Chattanooga is going to have a good squad this year and, uh, you know, Gardner Webb's getting better. Um, you know, I, I just, I don't know. I mean, I think our biggest, our biggest focus needs to be our, ourself because we have probably four weight classes that we're trying to determine who the best guy is to compete for us. And, uh, you know, I think if we get the right guys, the right weights and we train the right way and we believe the right way and we stick with our system and focus on us, I think we'll be right in the mix, um, you know, no matter who they, uh, you know, who we're battling against. I, you know, I know that Campbell's got a good squad. I think Chattanooga, Gardner Webb, all those will have good squads, but, but I do, I have a lot of confidence in our guys. If we get the guys the right weight and they stay healthy and and we commit to our goals and, and the long-term processes that we talk about in our program each and every day, uh, I have complete confidence that our guys will find a way to be competitive.